Welcome to another edition of News Bites here on Daily World Television. My name is Cal Korf and I'm your host. Barack Obama and his wife Michelle have signed a two book contract with Random House Penguin Books. Penguin will control the overseas rights, Random House will control global parental rights. Random House is the largest publishing entity in the world. They have signed a contract for $60 million. And let me give you some inside info about it. I know about this because my publisher is also Random House. So what has happened is Obama is, of course, remaining politically active. Don't be fooled by the idea that he's retired or he's just gonna write his peaceful memoirs, no. Obama has gone back to what he was doing before he ran for Senate and then the White House, and that is engage in political activism. Only what he cannot do, do is afford to be seen as leading the charge. So what he's doing is he is setting up operations so that he operates largely behind the scenes. He has put some of his key staff in places. He's still shoring up his plan. Because it turns out that the plan for him to remain active and engage in guerrilla warfare type activism to preserve his legacy, he's that egotistical, plus he believes he was right, was not his brainchild. He was actually had to be convinced by two women, Valerie Jarrett and his wife, Michelle. This is a pattern with him. He's always been under their influence, especially that of Valerie Jarrett. Valerie Jarrett, in fact, is moving into the Obama's mansion in Washington, D.C., and it is from Washington, D.C. that Obama will continue to engage in his stealth politics. So, what kind of publisher is going to give somebody $60 million to write two books? They're not going to make money off of it. The market is not there. Obama has been a best-selling author, but $60 million? It's not there. It doesn't add up. Well, what we have is a repeat of what Hillary Clinton received when she wrote her book, Hard Choices. The reason she wrote that book was to officially launch her presidential campaign, and of course the stunt fooled nobody. Clinton, unlike the Obamas, was paid some seven to eight million dollars, seven to eight million dollars, for that book. It didn't earn profit. But one of her good friends was a key executive who ran the publisher and of course was a longtime donor for the Democratic Party. So for her to write her friend Hillary Clinton a check was no big deal. The same kind of anything but Trump politics is going on with Obama's $60 million book deal. Because one of the motives for giving Obama that kind of money is to make sure that he puts it into anti-Trump causes. In other words, this isn't going to go into a Swiss bank account that Obama has or some offshore account or even American account. It's not meant to give Obama a good send off and a thank you very much for a great job of being president that you did for two terms. None of that feel good, touchy feely stuff. It is, again, cold, calculated, cynical politics. Now, I remind you and everybody who's a Obama supporter that we must remember a hard reality here. Half the country does not support Obama. Over 80% of Americans felt the country was going the wrong way under his two terms in office. In fact, the greatest legacy of Obama is not Obamacare. Stop revising history and seeing it through rose-colored glasses. The greatest legacy of Obama and a damning indictment against what he did and what he failed to do is the fact that Donald Trump now sits in the White House. If Obama and the Democrats were so competent and had done a great job and everybody just loved them, like you would like to believe what the media has hyped them to be, Hillary Clinton would be in the White House now and not Donald Trump. So there was a backlash against Obama and the Democrats and this la-la liberal bent they had by just enough Americans, roughly half of them, to give Donald Trump the Electoral College so that he now sits in the White House and has the mandate to go ahead and undo much of what Obama did. Now, it remains Trump's legacy to lose, meaning he could certainly do all the things wrong and Republicans are known to do that. The very ideology of the Republicans is out of touch with what most Americans 
believe. But yet, many of these Americans, although they don't support Republican ideology, they don't believe in banning abortion, for example. They don't believe in putting Jesus Christ or God back into the schools. They like this, the idea of separation of church and state. They will still support Republicans when they feel that the Democrats become nauseous or too ridiculous to handle. And the Democrats are so talented, they're very good at self-destructing and imploding. Just ask Hillary Clinton. They keep losing elections and increasingly they're becoming irrelevant. So unless Barack Obama succeeds through his community organization and activism, taking a back seat for stealth tactical purposes only so that his presence doesn't become a distraction or a target focal point, unless he succeeds, we're going to be looking at a long time, at least for the foreseeable future, of more conservatism and the Republican agenda, which most Americans don't really agree with, but for right or wrong, they find it much more palatable than the loopiness of the Democratic Party.